Seamus, you signed a new one-year deal with us. How much does it mean to you to, to continue your journey at a club that means so much to you? Yeah, listen, it's, it's, it's the club that I know. It's a club that took me in as a 20-year-old and uh, looked after me. And, you know, I've tried to repay that every way I could. And, you know, it's hard to walk away from something you love. And, you know, I still feel good on the pitch at the minute. Um, it's been a tough couple of years, but, you know, this is my club and I love it. And, you know, happy, happy to stay on. All things considered, then, what were the key factors for you in, in, in signing this new deal? Um, to be honest, you know, it did. I had a bit of thinking time this time around, which was different to the <laughs> usual ones. But, you know, like I said, it's hard to walk away from something you love. This is uh, this is my club, and I love it. And, um, you know, you always hope for better. And the last couple of years haven't been great, but I always believe, and I'm always positive that things can get better. And, you know. The managers came in and I think the lads, you know, it went to the wire, of course, but, you know, showed good mentality t towards the end of the season in certain games, you know, Wolves away, Leicester away, getting points that were important. And um, I'm sure on, with the pre-season under this manager and when he gets his own style across to us and what he wants and changes the mentality of the group and hopefully changes the mentality of, of people around the training ground as well, that, that, that we can get better. This will be your 15th full season as an Everton player. 409 appearances for Everton. You could go into the top 10 of all-time appearances for the club. How much does it mean to you to, you to have that longevity and, and to you know, have represented the club for this long? Very fortunate. Extremely fortunate. Um, you know, I came over here as a reserve player, as everyone knows, and you know, just wanted to, to be the best I could be every single day and keep pushing every single day. And from that first training session to, the, to my... Last training session before I got injured, I've, I've, I've went into with the same desire, same motivation, same application and uh, gave 100% every single time and no big secret to the longevity, just uh, really love what I do and I give it my all every single time, whether I play well or don't play well or train well or don't train well, I, I always go with maximum effort and yeah, listen, I, I love what I do and very fortunate and hopefully there'll be a few more appearances there. I appreciate you probably keen to look forward now. How good's it been to be back in Finch Farm this week amongst the lads again? Yeah, very good. Listen, I've been in a little bit over the summer doing some rehab, trying to get the knee as strong as possible to get back as quick as possible. Um, so it's been great to see all the lads come back in. Everyone's came back in in good shape, which is a positive sign. And, um, you know, obviously we'll be hoping to add some bodies to that as well. But um, very excited to, to have the lads coming back in and very excited for the season ahead and I think we all need to be like that we have to be positive we've had a tough two years and uh, we have to look at the season through uh, through positivity as hard and all as it might be at times with the noise around it but we have to be positive. You're touching it there your schedule looks a little bit different to the, the main group at the minute tell, tell us about how the, the rehab's going so far. Yeah it's going well obviously um, you know the first couple of weeks were, were slow you're mm -hmm. just kind of lying around the house and recovering and uh, icing it as much as possible but uh, had a week away last week with the family and I've come back and feel really good and getting the range of movement back of my knee and working hard here with the excellent medical team who look after me all the time. You know, I've been through an injury before, a serious one with, with my leg and got well, very well looked after here. So just working really hard in the gym at the minute and, and, and pushing the boundaries and, and like, like I always do, trying to get back as, as quick as possible. We touched on it earlier as well. Never a good time to get injured, but was it a particularly bad one this time around with it being the time of the season and, and, and the situation we were in? Yeah, it was tough. It was extremely tough, this 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 one, um, with the time. And, you know, I just came back uh, for, for that Leicester game after a small injury I picked up against United and um, to, co to come back and, and to get injured so, you know, so quickly. It was like just before the end of the first half. But because of the bigger picture of the games that were coming, yeah, it was, it was hard to take for sure. I wanted to ask you about the support you received as well. We, we saw the, the scenes as you were leaving the pitch trying to dupe the fans, the fans singing your name in the final games of the season. How much does that support and that love mean to you? Oh, it means everything to me. And You know, I knew coming off the pitch that night, oh, I was in quite a lot of pain, but mm. I knew coming off the pitch that night that that probably was the end of my season. I thought, I, what else can I do to, you know, one last thing to keep us going or keep the crowd going? And, you know, I've lifted my fist to them because I know them and they know me and I knew I'd get a reaction from it and I knew the lads would get a reaction from it and thankfully, you know, we, we ended up getting a point that night but um, you know, the fans' support to me has always been incredible and, you know, I really appreciate it and, 
you know, I live in the city and, and I see them all the time and they've always been great with me. And I think, and again, I say this to, to all the players, I think that's because all they ever expect from someone is, is to give your all and, and, and to, to show respect to what you do and for the football club and, and they'll welcome you with open arms. And I know you're not one for the limelight, the opposite in fact, but what was it like in the last game of the season having secured safety, the fans singing your name in the stands, was emotional for you? Yeah, it was, to be honest, when they were singing it. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting there and there's... There's much bigger things going on than, than than me at that present time, and then when you hear your your name being sung, it is quite emotional. It does touch you, and I can only thank them for that. And uh, listen, at the end of the game, it was just relief for us all, and that was the most important thing that that this football club stayed up. And you know, it goes to show you that you know there's no God-given right to stay in this Premier League, and you've seen that with the teams that have been relegated. Um, and and uh, we need to make sure you know that we that that we don't put ourselves in that situation again. You mentioned moving on now, drawing a line under what's happened. What do you think the key is now in, in these early stages of pre-season and looking ahead to the future? Well, you know, speaking from what goes on within the building, I think we just got to, you know, what you like to think that we do, but we have to treat every day with full respect, full work ethic, full respect for your teammates. Whether you're playing or you're not playing, you have to give your all for the football club because we are employed by this football club to, to do our best. And uh, we need to do that. We need to be, build a good team spirit. And that is something I have to say that the gaffer has been uh, working on is the mentality of the group. And uh, I think pre-season is vital for that. And uh, through the ups and, uh, and downs of the season that will be coming, um, we need to stick together and, and keep fighting and keep working and, and hope for a successful season. You mentioned the manager there, his staff as well, Steve Stone, Ian Wone. Uh, how impressed have you been with, with their work so far? And they, they really seem to galvanise the group last year. Is it a good base to work from now as, as we look ahead to a new start? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, it's a good base. And I think, you know, when they came in, you could see what they were about. But, you know, they obviously would have liked more time to, to put their full stance on things and, and lead the way they want to lead. And I'm sure from, from this pre-season on that they will do that. But they've been great. They've been very approachable. You know, very calm in 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 the middle of all the anxiety that we were facing with the last couple of games. They they stayed calm. They stayed focused. They you know gave the right signals out to the rest of the team that you know if we do the right things and then we'll we'll have enough. And I'm really excited by by what they can bring us in pre season going forward and building that real strong mentality that the manager keeps talking about. What sort of conversations have you had with the, the manager about your role here, about the, the bigger picture? Yeah, listen, I've had so many managers and I'm not really that type to go speak to managers about my role here or, or the bigger picture. You know, I speak when I'm spoken to the same as I was when I was 20 years of age. If a manager wants to come and speak to me, I'll speak to him, but I'm not going to be knocking on his door, giving him, mm -hmm. you know, ideas on what, what should or should not be happening. And uh, I've had a good relationship with, with, you know, every manager that's came through the building, through me just wanting to do what's best for the football club um, at all times. And... Uh, this manager's been the same, he's been approachable, we've had good conversations and I think he is he is desperate to put his own his own stance on things and I'm sure that'll be good. I'm sure it'll be tough. I'm sure it'll be tough for us all, but it'll be good. Obviously he's, he's as you mentioned, he's he's been big on driving standards, minimum required, maximum effort, that sort of thing. Yeah. How much of a role can you play as captain as well to really sort of instill that in the changing room? Yeah, well I think I think I can. But I think as a group, we all need to step up as well. It can't just be on one, two, three, four of the lads. Mm -hmm. Of course, we need to do the right things and we need to keep driving the boys at all times. But uh, I think as a group, we need to, to stand up and respect you know, where we are and respect the club that we're playing for. And uh, we, have, we have got a good grip in there, I have to say. I know, you know we finished just above the relegation zone and people be quick to say, you know, that's a failure. Of course, that's not where Everton football clubs should be. Absolutely not. We should be higher up the table. But, you know, the last couple of games or after Newcastle when we got beat, it would have been very easy for some of the lads to, you know, go hiding. But they kept working, they kept fighting, they were down to bare bones. And again, I think that's touching on the manager's mentality of, of trying to build that into lads that you can go away and, you know, you can put your backs to the wall and you can come away with points or three points. So... It'll be a working process for us all, but um, of course I've got a duty as captain to make sure at all times things are done properly. But you know, there's only so much you can do as an individual. You need to have pride in your own work at all times, and and that's something that the manager will be making sure the lads do. And just finally, linked to that, I guess as well, some really young players in the group as well. How much as a, as a senior player can you help them and sort of teach them about Everton standards and, and the way that you need to behave around the place and that sort of thing? Yeah, listen, our young lads are great, I have to say. Really good lads. Um, some of them have been out on loan and have, have that experience of playing and some haven't. 
but uh, we've got good senior lads. We've got a good we've got good lads in the dressing room that'll that are very um, you know open and talk to everyone and make the young lads feel welcome, and that's important because you want them to shine. You want them to fly their own wings in pre-season and maybe get an opportunity. So. It's a very open group, very welcoming group, and uh, it'll continue to be like that for sure. Thanks for your time, Seamus. Thank you very much.